I fired brides like this, to be honest. I guess that's technically legal. A free for all for 200 people. Someone wrote, do not do this wedding. Another person just simply wrote, run. Just run, simple. Hey everybody, my name's Katie Sauter. I'm an engineer and a wedding planner. And today we're going to talk about some insider wedding drama. Are they going to fire their client? Should they? If we can't learn anything from it, we're going to give it the big fat solder seal of failure. And if we learn something from it, cool. At least we learned something from it. Now, all of this is in a Facebook group. I anonymize everything because I don't want anyone to actually like get in trouble from this stuff. I think it's important to have this kind of anonymity. Let's dive in. As a planner, what is some verbiage you put in your contract to cancel a client? I.e. if a client is unruly, not listening to your advice, or following your process, etc. They have a little backstory here. I have a client whose wedding is in May for partial planning. They have asked me to reach out to an absurd number of vendors to get availability and quotes. And when I say absurd, I mean I have reached out to at least 15 photographers and got the info they needed and they have asked for more. Ooh, okay. I have asked them to contact the ones I have and get the questions answered that they need to make a decision on who they want to go with. That seems like a pretty reasonable solution. They have yet to do so and don't have any vendors booked. They keep wanting meetings every week, which is not included in my package and haven't done a single thing I have instructed or recommended they do. Every week is a little much. I mean, as a planner, you generally have multiple clients at one point and it's hard to spend all of your time with just that one client every week. You have to keep in mind that your planner also has a limited amount of time on their hands. The groom has been a pain to work with. Uh -oh. It's almost like they don't communicate at all as the bride has been good, but not stepping in when the groom is asking me to do things. I will add this is not just photography they have asked me to reach out to. They still don't even know what their budget is. It has been impossible to move forward. I do not want this coming back on me as if I didn't do a good job. It's required of them to book or hire their vendors and make the final decision on them. Yeah, that's true. I don't book for my clients. It needs to be their decision always. That's because I don't want them to have a bad day. I am looking for what to say in my agreement for me as a planner to canceling a client to protect my business from this in the future. I cannot do a good job without their participation. That is a really tough one, personally. She's clearly done a lot of work, this planner. One way to do this would be to be like, hey, I have tried. I can't do my job if you guys are doing this and like, look, I can't spend every minute with you because I have other clients that I have to attend to. I, I need to make sure that I also get things done for them. And this is also not in my contract. This is not in the, the package that you signed for. Sorry, they might have a better experience somewhere else. You can't take back all that time and effort. Maybe it's just not a good fit. Maybe it's time to say goodbye. Let's see what other people have said. I honestly would give their money back and cut ties. That's just me though. It shouldn't be that difficult for them to make decisions and I could only imagine what the actual wedding day would be like. Yeah. Author says, I would love to. I just don't have anything in my contract that states that I can do that. So it worries me. I just want to protect me and my business. Yikes. Yeah, that's a tough one. You can consult with an attorney and or add an addendum. Also, don't see much of a problem if you give their money back. You might lose valuable time, but also a huge headache in the future. That's true since there's nothing in the contract. Probably they're either stuck or getting the attorney might be a good option. That's kind of an expensive option as a business owner. Another member says, this business has the right to cancel this contract due to breach of contract, non-payment, harassment, or lack of common decency. In other news, I had a groom who expected me to do all of this but not included in their contract. And I just flat up told him, unfortunately, that's not included in your package. My hourly rate is $150 if you would like me to do that. Yeah. A top contributor in response wrote, my question is, what is common decency? Is that legal? My judge partner says it's not enforceable because it is subjective. We use four bullets that may be what this means. We can cancel for one, illegal, two, immoral, three, risk of bodily harm, four, harassing, slanderous, or abusive language. But we don't really know how to describe an uncooperative client. I don't know much about legal stuff, to be honest with you. So I would not have known that. That's pretty good to know. Did we learn anything from this particular story? Yeah, I really think we did. Uh, reading contracts carefully is really important. Shameless plug time. If you're in the middle of the wedding planning trenches and you are struggling to figure out when you need to plan what, I have a wedding planning timeline that is free and it's linked in my description below. Go check it out. Shameless plug time over. All right, here's our second story. Long post 
help. I posted about this earlier today, but I had the meeting with my babysitter and her future daughter-in-law as they want to hire me as the coordinator. The meeting was a preliminary get to know you and where are you in the planning process? Vendors are all friends and there are no contracts. When asked, the DJ said she doesn't do contracts. Contracts are good because it tells you what the backup plan is, who they're going to call. The contracts are a really good thing. They protect you and your wedding from harm and also determine who is liable for what if, God forbid, something were to happen. The food is being made and served by the family for 200 people without a license. I guess that's technically legal. I mean, people have reunions all the time, but yeah. I would be worried about food poisoning and preparedness. No one wants that. No one wants to get sick. Nobody. They are using paper plates and plastic cups. The photographer had never done a wedding before. I told the bride I usually connect with the photographer when making a timeline, and she said that the photographer was just planning on snapping pictures wherever and then partying afterwards. Oh, that's a plan. When talking about table setting, they don't want assigned tables. They just want everyone to find their own seats and be a free-for-all for 200 people. Okay, here's the thing about people. They really love it when they're told what to do. Adults love being told what to do. I, I am not kidding here. If you give people open seating, they're somehow going to find a ton of space to not sit next to each other, and it's going to look wide open and empty, and then there's going to be like, Mom and dad can't sit next to each other because Uncle Bill and Uncle Bob didn't get along and now they're not sitting together, but for some reason they're at the same table and this is a whole thing. If you actually assign seats, people will actually sit together and your venue will look more full. You don't have to assign each seat, but you should at least assign people to a table. In my contract, I require couples to purchase event insurance to what they re responded, we will not be purchasing event insurance. Event insurance is really important. I highly recommend that anyone buys it because you wouldn't buy a Ferrari and not insure it. It's also not very expensive to buy event insurance. It's usually like maybe a dollar a person. It depends on the state you live in, really. When I asked her if she wanted to do a receiving line, she responded, the ushers can do it, telling me she didn't know what that was, which some people don't, so that's fine. I honestly have not had to use much of my knowledge before in a meeting because most couples have some idea. The bride was a deer in headlights. If I'm being honest, I don't want to do this wedding, and I don't want my name to be on an event like this. But it's my babysitter that I've known for six years. What do I do? I'm pretty sure they are going to sign off and pay tomorrow. There's reasons to not hire someone, just like there are reasons to not take on a client. It sounds like you guys are not a good fit for each other. It is perfectly fine for a bride to have a simple and affordable event with not a lot of frills. If she is someone who has worked for you for six years, then I would offer to help casually organize on the day of as your gift to her. I have done this for several friends and family who weren't going to hire a coordinator at all, as a favor to them because I couldn't stand to watch the disorganization. I think that's actually kind of a nice, nice idea. Respectfully let them know your concerns and inform them event insurance is non-negotiable since it is listed in your legally binding contract. You aren't able to make an exception on that. I don't, I don't think you can legally do that though. I don't think you can legally force someone to buy insurance. Tell them that you had your other pending couple submit their deposit and contract today and that sadly you're no longer available. Then give them a list of coordinators they can reach out to so you're helpful. I mean, I, I don't advocate for lying, but that works. The author has an update though. That's a bullet dodged. They ended up not signing. The bride and groom thought a coordinator would be too fancy. Thanks. Okay, I feel like a coordinator is not too fancy. A coordinator is not fancy at all. A coordinator just helps make your day run smoothly. People are like, oh yes, perfect, you're right, yes. That's a clear indication of how that day will go. Happy to avoided that chaos kind of thing. Someone wrote, God is good. <laughs> Okay, that's really funny though. Someone wrote, do not do this wedding. Another person just simply wrote, run, just run. Simple, just nope. I've served as a resource when questions would arise but turned down contracting in situations like this. Preserve to the friendship. Preserving your friendship is really important. For cases like this, where you know the person really well, you have an established relationship, being mindful of that friendship is really important because you don't want to ruin it. <laughs> Someone else wrote, Run, 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 and run some more. <laughs> uh, I still think this 
this could be could have been salvageable. I am too hopeful. Someone else wrote, I would decline. Everything will fall back on you as the coordinator and reflect on your business. Especially if you want to grow and have good reviews, some guests are potential clients and they will remember the chaos. I, I also wouldn't want to do something that's all frienders as well, unless it was like my first wedding I was ever coordinating. And even then, I don't know. Someone else wrote, I differ from a lot of other people commenting here. She's a personal connection. Every wedding is different. I would talk to them and explain how what they are planning has gone wrong at other people's weddings just to warn them as a professional. But I sure don't blame them for wanting to feel like it's less of a production and more casual. Yeah, that's super true. I mean, there's nothing wrong with wanting to have a budget wedding. I did a wedding for friends, 200 plus, backyard, no tent, family and friends brought all of the food for a charcuterie table. Every meeting was way longer and there were more moments. Every time there was like, have you thought about this? <laughs> I kept it really positive and I think it turned out to be a pretty good experience for everyone. It was a lot, but it turned out really beautiful. It was worth it for the relationship. I really care about this relationship. It's definitely important to maintain it. And that's kind of changing my tone a little here. I have mentioned already on my channel that a potluck is a good option. And if someone gets food poisoning or everybody gets food poisoning, well, sorry. Someone else wrote, I decided to take a wedding very similar to this against my better judgment, and it is the only bad review I have ever received. No matter what I did right, they tried to find anything they could wrong just to deface my business. It was someone I knew personally, which makes it even worse. There are too many red flags to even risk your business. I understand there's a personal connection, and maybe she might not be your sitter anymore, but, Sometimes we have to be a little selfish and think about ourselves and what the damage could do if we decide to break through that barrier. In my opinion, I would absolutely not take this wedding. <laughs> Red flags. <laughs> I would absolutely never mix your babysitter and your business. What happens as an extreme example, if it were to come about she harmed your child and you no longer want her as a babysitter, now it's sticky because you are obligated to her wedding by contract or what if she stiffs you on the payments? It'll make things uncomfortable. And if she turns into a hateful, nasty bride, you won't want her as your sitter anymore. I just honestly see nothing good coming out of this. I would say you've given it some thought and you've decided not to mix business and pleasure because you love her and don't want that to change under professional circumstances. And then give her some other local planners and vendors who you might think might be a good fit for her. I think this is my favorite one so far. This is a really good option all of that but i would also explain why you don't work with frienders it's a nightmare and your aunt's great food for 20 is not the same as it is for 200. i would always recommend hiring professionals it's always either your time or your money in the terms of catering it may be your stomach aunt's great food for 20 yeah i would say it's probably not the same for 200. <laughs> it just reminds me of like so i was on a battleship in wilmington and all the quarters were really tight that's beside the point but they had to feed like 2,000 people on this small ship like every day. And don't quote me, I might be wrong about some of these numbers, but I just remember when you were in the kitchen and they're like, this is where we make the bread. You're like, oh, whoa, whoa, that's, that's big. They had listed out their ingredients to make bread and the amounts they needed. And it was like, holy crap, that, that is a pound of salt. That is a pound of salt. That would kill me if I tried to like, somehow consume all of that in one go. That's what it reminds me of. Obviously 2,000 people on a naval ship is not the same as a wedding. Slide over. This is the third story. What do you do with brides who choose your full planning package and one of the main things they need help with is vendor recommendations but absolutely hate every recommendation you give them? Oh. <laughs> the first response is, I fired brides like this, to be honest. They were horrible and it ended up being super demanding with me and my assistant and also wanted me to book five different bakeries cake testings. Uh, uh, that wouldn't, that would not be ideal. There is uh, nothing else to this story. That's it. <laughs> I know, kind of like left you on a cliffhanger there. I don't think I would fire this client yet. Uh, I think you should have like a real actual conversation with them um, just to be like, hey, these are the options in your budget. And uh, if you want to increase your budget, we can talk about that. 
but this, these are your options. It's not my fault that these are the options. <laughs> I fired brides like this, to be honest. Yeah, that's a bit intense. So some of these are solvable based on some just kindness and empathy towards other people on both ends. It's a two-way street working with people, right? Just because someone is in a service position doesn't mean that you should be treating them like crap. <laughs> other way around. We also have to realize life is hard and planning a wedding is hard and stressful. And that's what a wedding planner is supposed to help with. And we all deserve a little patience sometimes. Link below for my wedding planning timeline. It's in the description and it can help you navigate some of this wedding stuff. If you enjoyed this video, then you might enjoy this video where I talked about a couple that decided to make their guests bring their own food to their wedding. Boop that like and put a ring on that subscribe. Keep it PG for me, okay? All right, that's good.